Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Thomas Burke, and I am the Global Strategic Advisor for CLPA. I want to thank everyone for taking time out from their busy days to attend this very important webinar that really is going to talk about the value proposition of TSN and how we can help all of your companies successfully bring TSN-enabled products, specifically through CC Link IE TSN products, to the marketplace. We're going to start here now with Mariana Alvarado, and she will introduce everyone that's presenting. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, everyone. I would like to start explaining who we are as CLPA, what we do, and then I will present to you our general network portfolio of CISLINK IE. Well, CISLINK Partner Association is a group of device manufacturers and end users of CISLINK certified products. CLPA is an organization that can help you to implement our network technology to achieve the smart factory concept. A little of history, Mitsubishi Electric developed the Sizzling technology and in the year of 2000, they released it to the public domain as an open network. In the same year, CLPA was formed to manage Sizzling network technology family. This is how the CLPA organizations look like. It's formed by the board directors. We have nine of them, nine firms that operate CLPA and the sites on major association issues. The task force that is divided on technical and marketing, the CLPA partners supported by all the branches all over the world, and they have access to our testing facilities located in Japan, China, Korea, North America, and Germany. This is where are our regional offices. And as you can see, we have worldwide coverage. And now some of the activities and services that CLPA develops are, well, manage the Link family network protocol specification, provide technical and development support to members, provide Link conformant testings of members' products, participate in trade shows, trainings, seminars, and other activities, and finally, promote and market CLPA partner products in trade shows, publications, seminars, social media, and obviously in our official website. Here you can see some picture of the events that we participate in. And now about our technology. This is our Syslink IE family. IE comes from industrial ethernet. It's an ethernet based network. With the different families, we can cover from the device level with Syslink IE field safety and motion to the control level with Syslink IE control. The main characteristic of all these families are that they have a communication speed of one gig. You can have security, motion control, and energy management in a single network. You can have flexible topologies with, with our technology and have deterministic behavior, which ensures stable performance. Well, first, this link I control. Uh, Sislink IE control was designed to ensure a highly reliable network using full duplex fiber optic transmission paths. And with this, the result is a high speed and large capacity distributed control network. The first characteristic is that the network uses shared memory to help to achieve a stable communication based in token passing protocol. Each controller passes the data to the network shared memory and only when it has the token ensuring fully deterministic and high-speed real-time communication. The second characteristic is by uh, the adoption of the redundant topology, its station continues communication by looping back when the network detects a broken cable or a station error. This integrated redundancy is provided without an additional equipment and without increasing network costs. And the third characteristic is that the adapter and cables are Ethernet standard. You do not need the special adapters to beat your network. Now, Sizzling IE field. As its name says, this network was developed to field devices. You can have motion control and safety in the same network with no problem. And its main characteristic are, well, the high speed, the one gig, flexible topologies. You can have star, line, ring, and combination of star and line. Seamless networking and the cable and connectors are Ethernet standard. Again, you don't need special equipment to build your network. Sizzling IE field, unlike other networks, is also token-based as Sizzling IE control. Only one device communicates at the time. These behaviors avoid collisions. In other Ethernet networks, the collisions are very likely. 
And thanks to the bandwidth, the information can be divided in two ways, as you can see here in the image up in the right. You can divide it in a band of control information, the big band, and the band of production information, as you can see the small band. And now about Sysilink IE Field Basic. This network is focused on low scale equipment that do not require high speed. It's focused on IO control. The communication speed that you have with this network is 100 meg, and the communication bay is based on software. This network consists in a master and a number of slave station. These have a, a little just restriction about topology. You can only have start topology with this network, and about the communication can be simultaneous with Ethernet TCP IP. It's important to mention that Syslink IE Field Basic can connect with existing Syslink IE Field Network through the gateways. Well, now my colleague Tom is going to present you about the, our newest network, the Syslink IE TSN. Thank you very much, Mariana. So as Mariana talked about, the COPA has been developing and working very hard at bringing to the table both the field bus technologies as well as the industrial Ethernet technology. One of the significant things now that we've added over the last several years and announced in November of 2018 is based on the very exciting technology known as TSN or called the time sensitive network. Several years ago, I took a look at the TSN technology and I really saw the value of this and what it really brought to the table in terms of performance and deterministic and reliability. And the value proposition was really at that time focused at you know, kind of the audio visual market was also focused at the opportunity to be inside of the automobile. But we recognized, in particular CLPA, drove together the technology called CC-Link IETSN to really enable you know, the TSN technology to rapidly to be deployed. So let's talk about what is CC-Link IETSN. So what CC-Link IETSN really does is it combines all the technology that Mariana talked about with respect to CC-Link IE, our industrial Ethernet, along with the time-sensitive networking of TSN. This allows us to take CC-Link IE with its SLMP protocol, including all the messaging and the memory MAC architecture, to truly incorporate everything that we are doing with the TSN technology. So if you take a look at what we've done with CC-Link IE TSN technology and how it all comes together, it's taking everything we've done with IE Field, with what we've done with all of our protocols necessary, really to allow the whole Ethernet based, and we're going to start thinking about the ruggedized Ethernet and how to really take off advantage of really leveraging what we used to think of as the commercial off the shelf technology of Ethernet and be able to run this on the same physical wire. So I think a lot of my vendors are already planning on doing a lot of things that is more related to the ruggedized Ethernet cable and things like that. But you're going to see the value proposition of leveraging TSN and all the functionality of TSN, basically, as a strategy to really get you know, the ability to do a lot more data and information integration across uh, between disparate devices, across different industrial Ethernet networks, and have all this thing work in a very seamless technology. So I've given some presentations already that goes into a lot of the bits and bytes and talks that are going on down of where we are. So if you think of a lot of, about of our current technology of what we've done, you got TCIP, TCP IP, you've got a lot of other industrial ethernet networks out there. And the goal really of utilizing the TSN technology really is to take advantage of allowing things like CC-Link IE TSN and TCP IP and all these other open Ethernet networks to really be mixed on the same line by utilizing what's known as the TSN time-sharing method. And essentially, TSN really is, you think of it as the pipe. And as it's the pipe between the two ends, obviously, there's a lot of additional things that we put on top of the TSN technology, including motion and safety safety, which really provides a lot of the value proposition accordingly. So when I think about the CC-Link IETSN 
and a lot of the things that we've done. It's really all about taking advantage of what I call the intelligence uh, components, the connectivity, and the performance. So we're thinking very highly about, from an intelligence perspective, data and information integration, how you do all these things necessary to do diagnostics and configuration. And TSN has the promise of being able to allow a lot of different third-party tools to coexist and really help us out with doing things like diagnostics and configuration. And diagnostics, you'll be able to use tools like Wireshark and things like that. Connectivity is the key though. The connectivity really provides the ability to take lots of different devices and lots of different devices that people have wanted to have connectivity for a long period of time, but they couldn't. They didn't have the ability to do this or it was you know, difficult to do because it was running a multitude of different protocols and things like that. But now we're gonna have the capability of running on the same physical wire and that's really our goal and promise of the TSX technology. And with CC Link IE TSN, we've already proven this. We've already taken to market, and we've got a lot of companies that are building products based on this technology and taking advantage of the rich performance and reliability that the TSN provides with our CC Link IE TSN. So if you take a look at our whole IE open network strategy, and Marianne already talked a lot about this, IE is an open protocol that's managed by CLPA, which truly is an independent organization. We started from Mitsubishi, but you know it basically branched off and it's totally independent right now. Uh, you take a look at how IE field fits into the equation, IE control, and the whole goal is we can take all of those existing technologies and be because they're industrial Ethernet, now we can add CC Link IE TSN to the equation and allow all these things through a variety of different switches and things that we will put together as part of the equation to enable the technology. So very quickly here, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the products, and I believe I'm going to turn this over to John right now, who's been actively doing a lot of work for CLPA for a long period of time. I've had the opportunity to know John for a very long time and us working together. So John, you want to take over? Thank you, Tom. My name's John Browett, and I'm responsible for the activities of the CC Link Partner Association in Europe. The key point on this slide is that for, for any technology to be successful, we need to have a broad selection of partner products available. If you're building a machine or a system, you're going to need to be able to choose from a wide variety of different devices and other products to allow you to do that. What CLPA has been working on since the end of 2018, when CC Link IE TSM was introduced, is making sure that there's a very rich, comprehensive development ecosystem, if you like, for developing partner products. So far, as you can see down the side of the screen there, there's about 52 companies who are now looking at developing products for CC Link IE TSM. And as you can see, that includes a number of well-known vendors from the industry. And to give a specific example, one of our board members, Mitsubishi Electric, they are going to introduce over 100 products over the next year or so, which support CC Link IE TSN. So obviously there's a, a, a lot of support that's coming now. Let's look a little bit more in depth about what this development ecosystem is like. When you're developing a product for the network, it helps if you've got a number of industry standard solutions available to do that with, the, the kind of solutions that companies are familiar with and maybe you're already using. So again, that's what CLPA has been working on building over the last year or so. We're now at a position where certainly by the end of this year, there's going to be multiple different solutions released to allow products to be developed by third parties. And the photographs you see at the bottom of the slide here, these are from our trade show booth at the SPS fair in Nuremberg last year. These highlight some of the different partners who are working on those kind of solutions right now. Let's take three specific examples of partners who are in the process of introducing different solutions right now. These companies are all based in Europe. Mesco is a fairly well-known company 
in the automation industry. They've got a pretty good pedigree of working with many of the uh, well-known vendors in the industries. They are the right kind of partner to be working with. Right now, they have two different options that they are planning to introduce probably around September, maybe this year. So the first of them is a CC-Link IE TSN stack. So what this means is you'll be able to implement CC-Link IE TSN connectivity on your product just by implementing a software stack. This means that the implementation process will be a lot easier because if you already have a product which supports one of the other network protocols, like for example, say Profinet, you'll just need to change the stack so that it now supports CC-Link IE TSN. That's a much easier development process than just and having to start re-engineering and redesigning circuitry and so on. The other option that uh, MESCO is working on is in fact a safety development kit. And there's also going to be a CC-Link IE TSN safety development kit available soon. And this will be certified to SIL 2 and 3 so you can be confident it's going to offer the necessary level of safety for, for industrial automation applications. If you go on our YouTube channel, there's a short video there explaining what they are planning to do and, and what they're working on. Next up is Port. Port's got two different solutions that they're working on right now. First of all, they're also planning to offer stacks for CC-Link IE TSN, and they're offering both a master and a slave stack. You'll be able to develop uh, connectivity for some kind of master device, which actually controls the functions of the network. So, you know, typically that's something like a PLC, a programmable logic controller, or maybe an industrial PC or some other high level device. And they're also developing a slave device stack too. So that would typically be the devices that communicate with the master. So that could be something like a servo drive or a valve block or IO or something like that. The interesting thing about these stacks is that they're actually going to be certified to what we call class B. With CC-Link IE TSN, we offer two different certification classes, class A and class B. Class A is typically a software-based device that's suitable more for just general purpose control, whereas class B tends to be a hardware-based device that typically offers higher level performance for, like, for example, motion control applications or something. In the case of port, their stack will actually also be class B certified. So that means it gives you the possibility to do software development and actually achieve a higher level of performance. So that, that, that's a very positive sign for us. The stacks will also support something that we call SLMP, which stands for Seamless Messaging Protocol. And that's another CC-Link Partner Association technology, which allows you to do kind of like one-to-one -one client server communications between devices. So that, that offers some additional capabilities in addition to the main network connectivity. The other option that Port is working on right now is something called a System on Module or SOM. And basically what that is, is a small module that goes into your product. Um, so this is kind of like a self-contained communications interface that would drop into your existing product, like your variable speed drive, your inverter or whatever. That's based on Renesas microcontroller technology. It uses the standard serial peripheral interface connectivity from the module to the rest of the device. And so this, this gives you a hardware-based option for connecting to CC-Link, i.e. TSN. It also supports two Ethernet ports. If you are looking to offer a device that supports CC-Link, i.e. TSN's line configuration, it will allow that. It will also do multi-protocol capability as well. So as well as supporting CC-Link, i.e. TSN, you could also support other network type with this product. And then finally, it uses three volt technology, so it's not using a lot of power and it meets the general standards for design requirements. Sela are also working on a software stack. This is based on C code, C with C++ bindings, as they call it, which are basically a binding is like an, an, an API, which is designed for use with a particular language. So, so this gives you the flexibility to implement the stack using C as the basis for it. The idea of, of the Sela stack is it's meant to be very portable, so you can implement it on a variety of different hardware platforms easily. So far, there's two different platforms being planned for this stack. 
The first one is uh, with NXP's IMX6 device. NXP are one of the leading semiconductor companies in the industry, so that's a very widely used platform, and that runs with Linux. And then the other platform that's being developed right now is for ST Micro's STM32 microcontroller. It's a very widely used microcontroller in automation and other industries for embedded development. These are pretty popular platforms, so hopefully they will provide a good solution for people who want to implement this. As you can see, there's the image of the demo kit that was being shown at the SPS Fair last year. And that was basically a four station CC Link IE TSN network. There's a Mitsubishi PLC at the bottom. There's a Mitsubishi HMI display screen above that. And then you can see on the right side, there's a Linux board running the NXP device. And next to that is the STM32 device. These were all stations on a CC Link IE TSN network. If you push the button beneath each card on the right, you saw an indicator light illuminate on the panel of the HMI display screen to the to the left there. So that was just a simple proof of concept to, sh to show how this works. We just completed a special feature with Control Engineering Europe magazine. This is a 12 page special feature, which is going to be included in the June issue, which I believe is going to be published any day now. This goes through all the different vendors who we are working with right now and what their plans are for offering a CC Link IE TSN development solution. You can go to their website and you'll be able to download it as a PDF. We're also going to put this on our own website in the next few days. So, so watch out for that. We have a pretty comprehensive YouTube channel that's got several videos from all these different vendors and partners on it. So if you just go onto YouTube and search for CLPA Europe, you can hear directly from the companies involved what their plans are. That's the end of my section. Now we will hand it over to Piotr Siwek, who is going to join us from Mitsubishi Electric. So over to you, Piotr. Thanks, John. Hello, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining and, of course, big thanks to CLPA for inviting me to this webinar. First of all, I would like to introduce myself very shortly. You can see here my blue uniform that I was using in Japan. And those who are in touch with Mitsubishi Electric United States might also know person on the left, which is Meilin. And in reality, I am a bit taller than this, uh, what, what you can see on the picture. My story with Mitsubishi actually started just after the university. I started working in the Polish organization and then moved to Japan for a couple of years. Then after a short episode back in Poland, I moved to Germany to take over the product marketing team. And most recently, I am in charge of the whole marketing organization in Mitsubishi Electric Europe. So I, in total, I worked in three different countries in Mitsubishi, and I think I, it was a great experience, and I am looking forward for more, actually. I will give you a very short introduction of our organization. So in here, you can see the whole map of Europe. And as you know, Europe consists of many different small countries. That's why we have something so-called a uh, hub structure where we have the Eastern Hub, which is managed from Poland. And this includes all of the Eastern Europe countries, including Ukraine and so on. Then there is a, a let's say, Central Hub uh, managed from Germany. And uh, it, it also consists of Benelux countries. And then Italy is taking care of the South Europe. And then in the Northern Europe, we have uh, our offices in United Kingdom, Norway, Sweden, and so on. And then Russia and Turkey are also separate entities who manage their country business. So this way we are able to manage a bit more effectively our business. And my job is to coordinate activities in marketing in all these countries. In Europe, we are in a couple of businesses. So we have our business units like automotive, mechatronics, LES, and so on. But of course, for Sisling ITSN and so on, we are discussing mostly the industrial automation part of our business. And this is exactly where I am from. So 
Those are the products that we are selling in Europe for factory automation. You might know that European business is quite competitive in automation area, but we are actually very successful in the servo in motion and robot applications. We have a decent market share in Europe. And of course, our controllers are also quite recognized already on the market. And most recently, we also started promoting edge computing, which I will mention later in this presentation. So first of all, I will give you a couple of insights from our own development experience with Sicilian ITSN. This is, of course, related not only to Mitsubishi Electric Europe, but generally Mitsubishi Electric as a corporation, of course. The reason why uh, we are sticking with the Sicilian AI technologies is that, as you are already aware, we are long partner of CLPA and long time user of Sicilian technologies. And of course, we have a very big install base already of different Sicilian technologies. And it is very important for us that now Sicilian ITSN is kind of unifying all of the communication tasks that we have in our applications, in our uh, customers' factories. This way we are able to cover most of our communication needs with this network. Another reason include full capacity of motion control, which I will explain in a couple of slides later. And also that Sicilian ITSN is a great base for data analytics applications. And those two last points I will explain in a bit more detail. Regarding the motion control, for us, the key is that the motion control over Sicilian ITSN is not limited in any way. So we are able to reach the full synchronization of around 700 access. The most important part is that this kind of communication will not be interrupted in any way. Even if we have dozens of different devices in the network that includes any type of sensors and so on, but also the vision systems, for example, all this network traffic will not affect the motion control. And for our customers, this is a crucial point. So obviously having just one network for all of different devices is very important and it simplifies the engineering. But thanks to Sisling ITSN, we are also sure that the motion control will be provided with the full capacity. The example you can see here is, for example, the printing machine, where definitely you use, for example, the vision systems for the quality inspection and so on. And we can realize every single need for such machine using Sisling ITSN. So that's why I mentioned fully performant motion control, and this is a key for our customers. I mentioned that Sisling ITSN is a perfect base for data analytics. And the reason here is that we have always a timestamp with each data that is provided in the network. This, of course, comes from the specification of the TSN network, but this is actually a very important feature that can be later used in various applications where we can analyze the data in the network. So basically the data collection in this kind of network is basically effortless because the data is already flowing, uh, the machines are communicating. This kind of data together with the timestamp can be used for analytics of various kinds. So this could be related to quality inspection, this could be related to predictive maintenance. But the point is that Basically, we don't put any effort to collect this data because it is already available in the Sysling ITSN network. And the way how we utilize this data is by using our MLIPC industrial controllers. Those are devices that work on the edge in the factory floor. There is a coming version of the MLIPC that is uh, including the Sysling ITSN as a standard communication. So that means that all this data uh, that is flowing in the network is available for the analytics in the Mel IPC. The way how this works, the, the flowchart you can see on the picture on the right. So basically we are collecting the information that is used for offline analysis. And offline analysis is providing us any kind of diagnosis rules. So we are teaching the system what are the normal behaviors and what is abnormal, for example. And based on this diagnosis rule, we are then implementing the real-time operation. 
So the system is recognizing the behavior in the network and can judge whether this is a normal situation or not. Of course, this kind of data analytics tasks you can solve in a different ways, but there is always issue of connecting the data collection part and the actual analytics part. Because of the Cicilinga ITSN features, we are actually able to do everything within the factory floor and everything can be done within this Mel IPC product, which really simplifies this kind of applications. And implementation is much easier than it used to be with older network protocols. So in the meantime, as Mitsubishi Electric, we have developed a full lineup of our automation components that include the Cicilink ITSN communication. So you can see this devices on the right. So we have inverters, we have servo drives, robots, of course, the PLCs and so on. And that also includes generic IO stations, for example. In future, we are expecting that we will replace all of the existing install base with Cicilink ITSN. So all other protocols will no longer be necessary and Cicilink ITSN can take over any type of communication needs at our customer sites. And of course, we already started sales of this technology. So we have the first applications where the Cicilink ITSN is the only network that is necessary. Of course, our products are quite integrated either way, but by using the Cicilink ITSN, we can actually create a much bigger integration of devices. So for us, it's, for example, important that the devices in different networks can also see their, each other operation. So not only devices in one Cicilink ITSN network, but also between different networks. This kind of feature is really important in our applications. And in here, you, you see the edge computing as a, let's say, higher layer than the production. And in reality, thanks to Cicilink ITSN, this is actually almost like one application on the same level, let's say. This is something we were able to achieve with Cicilink ITSN. A couple of points where we were focusing a bit more on making sure that the implementations that we provide are user-friendly. So because the Cicilink ITSN is providing all of our communication needs, we were able to focus on a bit uh, different developments. And for example, one of the features that we have developed for our master, for example, is that it can recognize and visualize the actual physical connections. So if you have the system connected, it will be visualized in the software so you can download the configuration directly. This you can see in the master station settings. Other point we have provided to our customers is that the parameters of slave stations are actually managed from the master station. So obviously, since the number of nodes in the networks is growing, it is not that easy to manage all of the settings, all of the parameters inside of various devices. So that's why now uh, master station is kind of like a central hub for parameters. And this was possible to be implemented very nicely in Cicilink ITSN master. Another point is that the kind of products that we are selling to the market, of course, are quite complex. So those are devices with various implementations. So they have a lot of parameters, a lot of different memory structures, and they require quite high skilled workforce. And that's why it is, it is not that easy to manage these kind of devices. And that's why we also implemented this kind of hints in the programming software. So what you see here is the screenshot from our software. And basically, the mapping of the devices in the slave module are available to be used in the software. So the programming is much easier. So you don't have to really remember any memory addresses and so on. Everything is provided as, a, as kind of hints during programming. This way, the visibility of different devices in networks grow quite a lot. And finally, also the security that we are providing. So... Again, master station in the Cicilink ITSN is kind of like a hub for security. So you can manage the access of different slave devices remotely from the master station.
Those are the things that we have developed for Sysling ITSN. As I mentioned, all of our main components are now available in a version with Sysling ITSN. But as a, let's say, supplier of automation, we also focus on cooperation with partners. So we are not able to develop every single device that is needed on the factory floor. We are experts in automation components such as PLCs or servo drives or robots, but there is always need for sensors, for vision systems, for any type of factory floor devices, let's say, or shop floor devices. And this is the reason why we focus on our partners as well. And this is the reason why we have developed some tools for them to also be able to join the, let's say, Sicilinga ITSN family. As Mitsubishi Electric, we are providing both software implementations and hardware implementations. Of course, the devices can be mixed in any way. So you can use your hardware slave with software master and so on. Each combination is possible. But of course, depending on the performance needed, it is advised to use the hardware implementation. Whereas if you just want to quickly deploy the device, uh, it's better to go for the software implementation. But as you can see, everything can be mixed. And in all cases, uh, both 100 megabytes, megabits and one giga is possible. So regarding the software implementation, we are supplying SDKs. And the background here is that we just want to make sure that it's relatively simple to quickly deploy a Sysling ITSN device. And the software implementation allows the master station as well as the remote station. What we are providing us as a supplier is the protocol stack and some source code and the diagnostic tools. So you are aware of any errors or, of course, the, the debugging process is much easier with the diagnostic tools. We are providing these SDKs in two different versions. And I think the more interesting one is the bundled version. The bundled version means that basically the source code already includes actual station. So you are downloading the protocol stack, you are downloading the sample code, and basically you already have device and of course you can modify it freely while the library version is just the typical version that you just import it to your environment a programming environment and you can use all the features that are provided you can see here that basically basing on the osi model we are covering all the core layers so effectively that means that the customer has to provide the hardware, so the device that will be running the Sysling ITSN device, and the user application, and that's it. So the intermediate layers are covered by the SDK. However, these kind of tools I mentioned, the SDKs, are quite suitable for any type of generic devices. However, if you plan to deploy motion control, there is actually one more package it's a software provided by us, which can be run on any type of IPC. And basically, this provides you the libraries to run motion applications equivalent to our motion controller. Our hardware motion controller can do pretty much the same amount of operations as this, let's say, software-based controller. So even up to 256 access can be controlled from this software. And the API functions are basically based on the PLC open motion specification. So it should be quite familiar to most of the engineers in, let's say, United States and Europe. And the second option that we are delivering to our partners is the hardware implementation. So a type of LSI chip that is covering the Sysling ITSN communication. Basically, it's a one unit, one chip that is responsible in your product for communication. Anything else, of course, it's up to the customer. So you are building your PCB, but the communication is solved using this LSI chip. The philosophy here is clear, so that the customer is focusing on the core value that he's providing. So our vendors have their unique value proposition, unique technology, and this is where they should focus. And 
the communication LSI is handling everything related to the TSN communication. With this hardware chip, we are also providing some sample code, so it's easier to deploy the first prototype. And very shortly, so you are aware of our activities in Europe, we already started discussing with our partners locally in Europe about development of their products using the Sysling ITSN connectivity. So we already have discussions with encoder makers, thermoregulators, local HMI providers. Then also we are cooperating with, let's say, sensor makers, so the vision sensor, as you can see on the picture. However, this is, a, let's say, more of a scientific application. This is where also our communication is being considered right now. Then CNC and laser machines in many kind of factories, this kind of numerical machines are usually quite standalone. But right now we are cooperating with our partners to actually connect this kind of devices to the main Sysling IETSN infrastructure. And also equipment such as, let's say, any type of material handling equipment such as lifts or cranes and AGV systems. So the hardware chip that I mentioned, we actually started selling this month and already we have a couple of interested parties in this development. So we are moving with this quite quickly. And that would be all from my side. So thanks for joining, thanks for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much. That was great. It's good to see that Mitsubishi is offering a wide variety of different ways to implement products as well as the products of their own. Hopefully what you've seen here today is going to make you want to get involved with the CLPA. And it's a very simple process. You can join for free at the basic level, what we call a registered membership. That gets you access to our technical specifications and other documents that help you to understand the technology better. Or alternatively, if you're just curious and you just want to stay in touch with us and keep up to date with our activities, being a registered member will do that for you as well. We're active on social media. We're involved with LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and so on. Our contact details and website addresses are all listed there. If you've got questions, you can drop us an email and we will get back to you as soon as we can. That's it from us for today. Hopefully you all found this interesting and you learned something. And we're hoping that you might want to get on board with us and start working with us on a regular basis. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, everyone, again, for taking time out from your busy day to attend our webinar. Please don't be shy and contact us with any questions you may have. Thank you very much and have a great day.